Mike writes, uh, the agreement that William Simon, U.S. Treasury Secretary, brokered with the Saudi king in 1974, the reason the Saudis accept U.S. dollars for oil. That's a really interesting one, man. I think I may have talked about this a little bit before on the show, but that's really interesting. Yeah, so William Simon was uh, Nixon's uh, Treasury Secretary. So, all right, this is basically when – this is like when people talk about the, uh, the petrodollar – I don't know if you if you're familiar with this uh, phrase, but I am I absolutely believe in the petrodollar conspiracy. So I know there's been you know people on both sides of this. I I am very convinced that the petrodollar is at the heart of what's going on with with the the U.S. Empire, uh, particularly at least the U.S. Empire in the Middle East. So more or less. You, you, if to get that, you have to get what what was happening with the gold standard, and the basically for most of of most advanced countries, say pre nineteen seventy one, for most advanced countries, the gold standard was the uh, the gold standard if you will, right? That's where that saying comes from. It's the gold standard in so-and-so, which is hilarious that we still use that, even though everybody's off of the gold standard, right? That's something to think about, okay? Take a second. We still use the gold standard as a saying. Okay, so the gold standard was, now, of course, there was, all the way back to like ancient Rome, basically, every great civilization that was built up was built on some type of uh, restricted government currency, if the government ran the currency at all. So the uh, America was always on a gold standard, um, except for brief periods uh, in war. Basically, usually when countries go to war, they go off the gold standard because they need to print a bunch of money for, for the military. Now, um, America uh, was, uh, was on the gold standard in, um, it was suspended briefly during the Great Depression uh, but we got back onto it. Now, after World War II, the situation was basically that all these these countries in Europe had been destroyed. So they had all just been like they there was wars throughout all of these countries. They were just fucking leveled. Like Germany, England, all fucked up. All these countries were you know had been now America had had been in the war, but we really didn't do any fighting over here. I mean, we got bombed at Pearl Harbor, but. Aside from that, we we hadn't really suffered any of the direct devastation, and America was uh, basically the big winners were America and and the Soviet Union, and and Britain won as well. But really, the dominant forces were the Soviet Union and the Americans, and the Soviet Union and the British. They had been decimated by war, um, and we hadn't. So the 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 new world order that came out of uh, um, the, the post-World War II era, was basically now you had the Soviets as one power. They took over the eastern half of Europe. The western half of Europe basically was under American, maybe not direct control, but that was our allies and our sides. And uh, uh, Keynes, John Maynard Keynes, was instrumental in helping to develop the Bretton Woods Agreement. And the Bretton Woods Agreement basically said that the U.S. would be on a gold standard. It was, uh, and we would fix our currency to thirty-five dollars per ounce of gold. And all, basically, what that means, right, it is just that your a dollar is redeemable in gold. So the government would print dollars and put gold away. So every for every ounce of gold, they could print thirty-five dollars. Now, it, that that would restrict the amount of currency that the government could uh, could you know could create. So. The deal was under Bretton Woods that the U.S. dollar would be pegged to gold and all these other European currencies would be pegged to the U.S. dollar because basically they didn't have any gold. They had gotten rid of most of their gold in the war effort. So we had – so they basically – felt like they were on a gold standard essentially because they could redeem their money in dollars and you could redeem those dollars in gold. So this is kind of what gave the U.S., uh, you know, their, you know, the, the gave the dollar its kind of uh, credibility. So anyway, 
Uh, fast forward now that this is around, I think, 1947, 1948, the Bretton Woods Agreement comes in. So now uh, the U.S., fast forward 20 years, uh, we're in the late 60s. And the United States starts cheating. They start cheating on the Bretton Woods Agreement. And we're printing way more money than we actually have gold to back it up. So we are, we're spending, uh, basically, it, it's the 60s. We have the Great Society Act. We create, oh, cool. Uh, so we have the Great Society Act. We have um, uh, the, we, we send a man to the moon. We create Medicare, Medicaid. We're fighting a war in Vietnam. And what you had was these European countries who are now getting flooded with dollars. They see all this. They see all this happening. And they called our bluff. And they were like, I don't think... America has this much gold. I don't think they can be printing this much money. So they were like, uh, we'll redeem those dollars, please. So we have all these dollars and they're redeemable for gold. So we're going to take the gold, please. And uh, they called our bluff. And Richard Nixon was like, nah, we're not giving you that gold. That's not going to happen. Uh, and, you know, he phrased it in a way where he was like, these foreign powers are going to come in here and wipe out America's gold reserves. But really, it was theirs. Like, the, the dollar was just redeemable for gold. So they had every right to do it. It was like France, I think, was the main uh, – France and England, I think, were going to come in and, you know, convert their dollars. So – Nixon just went, you know, he was like, to protect the, the economy and to protect the value of the dollar, I am temporarily suspending the convertibility into gold. So temporarily. So this was in 1971, I believe late 1971, uh, Nixon um, took us off the gold standard. So what you had then was basically our bluff had been called and uh, – and everyone knew now. Everyone knew that we, the, our currency wasn't in check at all. We were off the gold standard. And there, there, a lot of the, the, the stuff from the 60s started leading to the inflation in the 70s, started having real bad problems with inflation. And so the scheme that they came up with, that William Simon came up with, was he went to Saudi Arabia and he made a deal with the Saudi king. And the deal that they made essentially was that the Saudis – would exclusively sell their oil for U.S. dollars. So you had all these people. So essentially what happened was we transferred from a gold standard to a petrodollar standard. So you, um, you no longer could get gold for your dollars, but if you were holding dollars, uh, you could go get oil with them. And this essentially, uh, which, I mean, you could argue oil – uh, by 1974 was a lot more valuable than gold. I mean, you're not going to, you don't actually run an economy on gold. Uh, so oil, so basically all these European countries and other people, just people who are holding dollars, um, like just investors, um, this kind of calmed them down. Like they were a little bit pissed off. They were supposed to be able, and also Nixon said temporarily I'm suspending the gold standard. So they're all kind of waiting like, well, when can we convert these for gold again? And then it was basically like, well, look, you can't convert them for gold, but you can get oil with these dollars. So that's okay, right? And everybody basically went like, okay, that's okay. However, in order to get Saudi Arabia to do that, we basically guaranteed their security. So we guaranteed this brutal dictatorship that we would protect them if, if, and in exchange for this deal. And now we have a serious incentive to make sure the government of Saudi Arabia doesn't fall. And this didn't sit well with a lot of people in the Muslim world because, you know, Saudi Arabia, like I'm, I'm not an expert on Islam. I'm more of a Christian conservative. But Saudi Arabia is a fairly important place to the Muslim people. It's like their Mecca. So they were now... Uh, um, basically th there was this brutal theocracy that was very, I mean, extremely oppressive to the people there. And they got even worse after, cause once you got like the U S government backing you up, it's like, well, yeah, now you're fucking gangster. Um, and then this laid the groundwork for what is now the petrodollar. And what's real interesting about all this shit, man, is that if you look around at all of the wars that we fight to this day, there is this 
very direct connection to the petrodollar. And if you look at um, Saddam Hussein, I think it was right around the year 2000 that he decided they're going off the, the petrodollar, that Saddam Hussein was going to start trading oil in gold and euros and not just dollars, and he got fucking taken off. Gaddafi was, was involved in this deal he gets taken out too. It's There's this thing where, I, now I've heard different economists argue whether or not we really need the petrodollar at this point to prop up the dollar. But even if that's not the case, that doesn't mean that these guys don't believe that that's the case. And I, it just, it seems way too coincidental. If you look at every single regime that we support, they're the ones that trade oil and dollars and everyone that we go in there and overthrow are the ones who dare to question that that dynamic and um you know they'll say things like whatever it is it's like you know saddam was moving in on kuwait or something like that but it's like yeah dude we don't give a fuck about you moving in on kuwait look at what the saudis are doing in yemen we support them you know they'll be like a whatever you know like the, iran is a is like a repressive regime or something like that but we don't give a fuck we don't care if you're a democracy we don't care about your human rights violations but one thing we really do seem to care about is whether you're exclusively trading dollars for oil so to me that's in many ways that 1974 deal with the saudis is what starts this whole whole thing off i mean there's different starting points but that was a real big one for sure so if you want to get lost down like a fucking rabbit hole of conspiracy shit, just go start reading up on the petrodollar. It's fucking, it's real, real shady. And I, I will say that sometimes, like I don't, I don't subscribe to every conspiracy, but there are some where the pieces to the puzzle just fit together too perfectly. And you're like, oh yeah, that's fucking, that definitely, there's something there.